So it doesn't matter which color you start with. I've got the white here first, but it's really important that you have a sheet of clay that's gonna be the same size. Now in some of the techniques that I do, I don't care if the clay, when I rolled it through my machine, has a little fold in it. That doesn't matter in some cases. In this case, it's best to have a nice clean sheet with no folded crevices in there because we don't want that to interrupt the structure of the stripe. So let's lay this down on our work surface. And when you're working with a bigger sheet, I've shown this in other videos, we gently want to smooth it down. We don't want to trap air between the layers of clay. And again, using our blades straight up and down, we're going to trim away the excess and then we're going to thin this. Now, how thick or thin your stripes are is all a matter of personal preference and taste. I have a formula that I use for a lot of my striping. I don't stick with it all the time, but it, it's the formula I like for a lot of the work I do. On my machine at home, I like to work on the third largest setting. So each of these layers was rolled out on the third largest setting, and then uh, I stack the two together. But you can do stripes, one that's thicker against one that's thinner. There's just really no limit to how you can design a stripe. You can even use more than two colors. But we're gonna keep it simple for now because if you can master this, you can do anything with striping. Lifting it up without stretching it by angling our blade and shimming it under there, we're gonna to go to our clay machine. Now, you wanna start on the largest setting of the machine. You don't wanna damage the guide blades by pushing clay that's too thick through a thin setting and we're gonna roll slowly, and that allows any air that might get trapped in there to come out. And I found a little inclusion in there. That's what happens when you have pets and things. So you see that stretched it quite a bit. But I wanna reduce it even thinner. If you're not sure how thick you like your stripes before you advance to a thinner setting that you may not like, you can always just lop off a little bit from one edge and take a look at the striping to see how thick it is and see if you like it where it's at or you wanna go a little thinner. So I'm gonna take this one setting thinner. Now my machine at home, uh, the third largest setting is very similar to the second largest setting on the machine I'm working with here today in the studio. So if you see the contamination on there, I used to panic about that. Don't worry, we're just stacking black over it so it's gonna hide that contamination. And you can use a ruler. I usually like to eyeball it. So, and I don't have to make my sheet exact. There's a reason I like to have excess clay when I do stripe loaves, and we'll talk about that when we get to that stage. So I'm gonna cut it and stack it, and again, very gently, without a lot of pressure, we don't wanna create valleys in our stripes. We're just gonna smooth it from one end to the other so air doesn't become trapped. That's something I emphasize a lot, but I don't think you can emphasize it too much. And I'm gonna cut it in half again, and lift it up and stack it. You can start to see that nice stripe forming. Now, how tall should it be? Well, it depends on how much clay you started with. I started with a half a bar of both the black and half a bar of the white, half a bar of each. So I am gonna cut off a little of this excess off the back and set it in my scrap pile. Cutting it in half again, either with a ruler or if you're good with spatial relationships, you can eyeball it. And just stacking and gently smoothing down. Don't compress it too hard. I'm gonna cut it in half and stack one more time. Now you don't wanna to end up with a loaf that's super, super tall and narrow, but for this project, if I have striping that is wide enough to cover each side without having to abut multiple slices together, that's really ideal for me. So here we go, we're going to stack it again. Just light compression. We don't wanna change the width of any of those stripes distortion is, is the problem. So you, you can see right there, I'm gonna turn it towards me because um, when, we, when we work out in front of a camera, oftentimes we try to slice in front of us. And I think people pick that up and do that at home. But really the proper way when you're cutting a millefiori cane or a stripe loaf is to face it towards you so you can see what you're doing. The only reason people learn to do it that way is they think that's how they're supposed to. But that's just for the camera. So I'm gonna slice a clean bit off of here and I wanna show you just how pretty that striping looks. If there's any contamination on your blade, any clay residue or glue from another project that's right on there, it can create a drag line that's gonna distort the stripe. So always make sure your blade is clean and sharp. That's really, really important. So I'm gonna show you something really dramatic. We wanna make sure that we cut it the right way. So that's the first most important tip in striping. The stripes need to lie down. So they're 
They're parallel with your work surface or they're horizontal. If you cut your loaf with the stripes facing up, with each cut you're applying pressure, the stripes are going to bow on the outer edges and it's going to continue with each slice you make and they're going to get more and more round and distorted. So we start the same way we start our day, we're lying down. So we cut our stripes lying down. But let me just show you how dramatic this is. I'm going to cut a fairly thick slice. This is about an eighth of an inch thick. And I am going to cut this in half. And I'm going to take it to the clay machine. And I'm going to reduce it down quite a bit, quite thin. Now the second tip, we slice lying down, but it's important how you roll your stripes. I'm not going to tell you that to do this the way you shouldn't is wrong. It's not wrong, it's just different. If you want clean, precise striping, you always roll it with the stripes facing up or vertically. So the opposite of the way we slice is the way we roll. So I'm going to put this in the clay machine with the stripes facing up and I'm putting this other half with the stripes parallel to the machine. And on a very thin setting, I'm going to show you just how dramatic this effect is. So this is really thin to the point where it actually caused the striping to tear a little bit. That, that's okay. I still can show you what I mean. I think it's pretty obvious here. The side with the stripes facing up, you can see it's nice and clean and the stripes maintain their integrity. But the, this one, you get a zebra effect. That's why I said it's not wrong, it's just different. So if you want the effect of zebra striping, now you know how to do it. So let's go back and prepare our stripes for our machine and I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite clay tips of all time. So I'm looking for slices that are, again, about an eighth of, eighth of an inch thick, but I'm not sure they're gonna be that thick. Here's a tip about slicing. So when you slice, you're looking straight down over the top of your blade to make sure your blade is straight up and down, not at an angle, because then we're cutting a wedge, aren't we? Straight up and down. But it's okay to turn and look from the side to make sure as you pull down that you're cutting it the same thickness all the way through. Another tip, especially if your blade's a little more flexible, if you pull out on the edges, you put tension in the blade and you're going to get a cleaner slice. So for that reason, sometimes I like to work with a thinner blade that's a little more flexible because the thinner the blade, the sharper it's going to be. Sometimes you'll want your striping to rest for a few days and firm up. But with the female clays, I find I can cut right into them with little or no distortion right after I work with them. So I'm going to turn this back towards me and I'm going to cut a stripe or a slice that's a little more than an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. And look what happened here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little line in there. That meant there was something on my blade. That's okay, I'll work around it. I might have enough striping to do my whole piece. So here's a tip. Oftentimes our play machines, no matter how much we take care of them and clean them, little bits come out. I call them the hitchhikers. They hitch a right on your clay and it ruins the piece that you're running through. So if you take a piece of parchment or baking paper and you cover the clay with it as you go to roll it through, all those little hitchhikers are going to be on the paper and not your clay. When you're doing a big piece, you never put the two in together. You feed the paper in gradually, giving the clay a chance to stretch but the paper won't stretch. You don't want it to buckle and wrinkle on your clay. So I'm gonna go back to my largest setting. We'll start there. And with my stripes facing up, I'm going to just roll it enough to grab and separate my paper. And now I get a uniform thickness. So I'm gonna reduce it down one more setting because I wanna see my stripes not just from the sides of my piece, like here, but from the front. So we're looking at it from two, two profiles. All right, so into the machine again, separating my paper and re-rolling my stripes, making it just slightly thinner. And we're gonna leave it like that and peel the paper off. So you notice how there's a lot of distortion. Let's take a look at it from here. A lot of distortion at the top and the bottom and the outside stripes, that's normal. Oftentimes uh, in books and videos, editors will like us to cut this and make it perfect. I don't like to do it because that means more wasted clay. And it's not truly wasted. It goes into my scraps for another use. But the more scrap that you leave, the less distortion you're going to have. You're going to have more usable stripe to work with. Mm -hmm.